knew you would come in the end. Is Miss Isabella at home? Miss Isabella? Is she home? Now, come. I like her too well to let you absolutely seize and devour her up. Besides, I would not approve. You would not approve? You, who have treated me infernally, infernally, do you hear? And if you flatter yourself that I don't perceive it, you are a fool. Darling, don't speak like this. And if you think I can be consoled by sweet words, you are an idiot. So I will ask you again. Is Miss Isabella at home? I am proud to show you at last somebody who dotes on you more than myself. Sister, dear, I really... I'm don't sure that my poor little sister is breaking our heart by mere contemplation of your physical and moral beauty. Cathy, this is most unfair. Be kind enough to excuse me. Cathy forgets that you and I are not intimate acquaintances. And what amuses her is painful to me beyond expression. You had no reason to treat the poor girl in such a manner. Do not fret. I would as soon as put a canary in the park on a winter's day than recommend she bestow a heart on you. There would be a certain symmetry, though, with then art in Miss Isabella Hinton and I becoming lovers. Perhaps your fortune has changed you. Well, my fortune has changed me in every regard. Except one. And if I could change that, too, I would do so. I'm Laura Linney, and this is Masterpiece Classic. Previously... By this time tomorrow, I shall be your father, so you had better get used to appeasing me. Can it be true, Nellie, that my mother loved this monster? They were childhood sweethearts. Nothing more. From now on, you will keep company only with the servants. The Galintons asked me to marry him. you to take this and promise me you won't tell your husband I'll still throttle me. In three years, not one indication whether you were alive or dead. <laughs> what have I done? <laughs> Emily Bronte's Wuthering Heights, tonight on Masterpiece Classic. Masterpiece is made possible by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you. Emily Bronte was a clergyman's daughter. She grew up in a remote part of England. She didn't like to travel. When she left home, she became ill. She never married and died at the age of 30, having published one novel under a pseudonym. It was one of the most shocking novels in English literature. When it was first published in 1847, it created a firestorm of protest. It was called one of the most repellent books ever published. One critic said it should be burned. The storm of protest only got louder when the second edition came out and the author was revealed to be the daughter of a parson from West Yorkshire. How had a parson's daughter created such a threat to civilized society as Heathcliff, an anti-hero driven by sexual passion and vengeance? And instead of a proper Victorian heroine, she gave the world a married woman who runs around on the moors in her nightgown having trysts with her lover. 
the reading public was shocked. Shocked. And the novel has never been out of print. Wuthering Heights. What is this? This is an agreement that Mr. Heathcliff has the first option to purchase any more land and buildings you may wish to sell. This is the balance of the account, sir. Joseph! Saddle up, Hunter! Had I known I could ruin that man in the space of three months, I would have come back sooner. I thought I would never find this place. That's why I told you to bring Cathy's horse. She could find her way up here in the dark. Is this the place you bring all your sweethearts? Or only Cathy before you. Is that how it's always going to be? Kathy before me. I saw a spirit in you last time I saw you at the Grange, Isabella, that stayed with me. It is as though your brother has a woman's gentleness and you have all the fight. <laughs> Cannot tell whether you are flattering me or not. Everything you hear about me is bad. But you see some good in me. That's why would you be here? Perhaps I'm attracted to the bad in you. No, do not make a joke of it. A person who sees the good in me is a sensation I experience so rarely that it is enough to make me want to at least try to love you. What are you about raising this stir? I said you must let Isabella alone, I beg you! I'd have been received here, and, and you wish Edgar to draw the bolts against you. God forbid he should try. Go keep him meek and patient. I love Heathcliff more than you have ever loved Edgar, and he might love me if you would let him. And I could never love a Linton. And yet he's quite capable of marrying you to hurt me. He's as good as told me. I don't believe you. <laughs> what is it to you? <laughs> I have a right to kiss her. If she chooses, and you have no right to object, I am not your husband. There's no need for you to be jealous. You like Isabella, you will marry her. But do you like her, Heathcliff? Tell the truth. Answer me. Answer me! You will not leave me here until you answer me! If you wish me to marry Isabella, I'd come out of it. Take her. If it pleases you, you clearly prefer the bliss of inflicting misery to the bliss of our love. This is insufferable. It is disgraceful that you should own him for a friend and force his company on me. <laughs> is that how you call it, sir? I have so far been forbearing with you, sir. Your presence is a moral poison that would contaminate the most virtuous. For that cause and to prevent worse consequences, I shall deny you hereafter admission into this house. Kathy, this lamb of yours threatens like a bull. It's in danger of splitting his skull against my knuckles. I require your instant departure, sir. One minute's delay will render it involuntary and ignominious. No, I will not move. 
until I hear an apology from you. An apology? After constant indulgence of both men, I earn for thanks two samples of blind ingratitude. Edgar, I was defending you and yours. Kathy, please get out of my way. Apologize. Get out of my way. Make an apology or allow yourself to be beaten. <laughs> All I want is your happiness. But I am, I must admit, utterly defeated in this. Indeed, I can only attribute your spite and venom and betrayal to some unfathomable damage deep inside your heart. To think anything else is to think so badly of you that I cannot bear it. Well, I must compliment you on your taste, Kathy. This is the slavering thing that you would prefer to me. Remain where you are, Kathy. I shall not stay, but I wish just to learn whether, after this day's events, you intend to continue your intimacy. For mercy's sake, just let us hear no more of it. Get rid of me. Answer my question. Will you give up Heathcliff hereafter, or will you give up me? It is impossible to be my friend and his at the same time, and I absolutely require to know which you choose. You cannot make me choose! I demand it! If I choose to remain friends with him, Then I shall ask you to leave this house. May I speak? To chastise me for my weakness, to mock me for my kindness. If you hear me out and you still want me to leave, then I shall relinquish any claim I have on you. Very well. If you cast me out, you shall cast out both your wife and your child. I am with child Edgar. <laughs> <laughs> 